Hey, thanks for tuning in. Jason here, KM6 FAK. <laughs> oh man, how funny is that? Yeah, so been kind of busy here in the shack. Uh, new microphone, new boom. Decided to try a different backdrop, as well as I've got a new 12 channel mixer here in the shack. Um, doing a couple things, bringing the radio in, bringing the SDR in, feeding the camera audio through here. At the same time, we'll go into the radio. So the idea with the headsets is I can then uh, monitor my audio and see if it gets a little too loud or, or clipping, but I think I have it dialed in for the most part. So I just wanted to put this video out and just kind of show you, you know, what I did. A lot of times you get a radio and the microphone, you know, definitely works good. It's pretty handy, but you know, maybe you want to do something different. Um, maybe you want to do some recording uh, for a video or for that matter, use a nicer mic, put it on a mic stand, a foot switch, uh, maybe a, a trigger to, to key up the microphone. But let me show you what, I, uh, what I've kind of put together. And I couldn't have done this, of course, without my Elmer, Kevin, and 6VLF. And so uh, we got the mixer as well as uh, making our own cable. Now, there's a couple of people out there that you could buy the cable. What's interesting about the Yesu radios, a lot of them use a RJ45. And uh, that's not too hard of a connector to come up with. I mean, it's just going to be your standard Cat5 Ethernet. But you do need a special tool to slip it through, crimp it. The other piece of the puzzle is ideally you want to pass it through some kind of transformer. And I'll kind of show you what that looks like. What we used was a Rolls DB25 matchbox. And that is a transformer balanced passive direct box. The idea of it is the microphone pinout goes through that box before it goes into the mixer. Now, what's interesting about the connector I wanted to build for the Yesu radio, the RJ45, is that I really couldn't find it out there. Um, Bob Heil, of course, sells a lot of different connectors for a lot of different radios, for a lot of different microphones. And the idea of that is you can plug it right into your radio and right into the microphone. I kind of wanted to first pass it through the mixer, uh, you know, to have a little fun, throw a little echo, <laughs> or just simply put it into the camera, bring in other audio mixes from other sources. So, in looking for what I needed, I really couldn't find it. And the things that were being sold by Bob Heil that were would be close and I could probably make work, they're anywhere from thirty to fifty dollars. What I ended up doing is just kind of building my own. Um, at first, it definitely seemed a little daunting. Uh, you know, what the heck? Don't want to mess it up. New radio, of course. But like I said, hopefully uh, you have an Elmer or maybe you can watch videos that will help you with. Uh, your case scenario might not be this same radio, might not be this same connector, but you know, I started with the owner's manual. Owner's manual came with the radio, and looking at the uh, at the mic jack, um, it is an eight pinner. There is uh, stuff going on on all eight pins, and I just uh, started reading down through them, and you get to pin four, you have mic ground, then pin five is mic, then pin six is PTT, push to talk, and then pin seven is ground. Um, working with Kevin, we figured out, or he figured out, <laughs> that right there we have mic ground and mic. So those are two uh, set of contacts we will need for the microphone. And then we have the PTT and ground. So those are two other contacts we're going to need to make that work. So next we got just a Cat5 connector um, as well as some standard Ethernet cable. I think this is just uh, Cat5. I'm guessing you could, you could use Cat6, different gauges. I believe this is a 24 gauge. The gauge doesn't really matter too much. And uh, we picked a color pair that we liked. So pin 4 and pin 5, mic ground and mic. Those two conductors or pins, those pins need to transfer over on conductors into the XLR connector.
So for this application, we're using a standard three pin XLR connector. And the way that typically is, is pin one on your XLR is gonna be ground. Pin two is gonna be your positive mic signal and pin three is gonna be your negative. So for our application, what we did is we took mic, which is pin five, and we took that over to pin two on the XLR. Then mic ground, which is pin four for the radio, and we took that over to pin three, which is the negative. Now we also took pin three and jumpered that over to pin one, which is ground, inside the XLR connector. The XLR connector then went into our transformer. Out of the transformer, it gave us a quarter inch jack that we brought into our mixing board uh, over here. Now it's always a good idea when making your own cables up is that you test them. A simple continuity test with a meter is really all you need, making sure the pin you're going after, let's say that's going in the radio, then becomes the correct pin you're trying to put on the XLR connector. Um, you know, at worst, the radio or something will blow a fuse, uh, go into a safe mode, lock itself out, a simple restart could help you. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know. Or, um, you know, it, you could blow something up. Uh, it, it's kind of unlikely. Uh, for the most part, you're not dealing with a lot of volts. So then once the microphone was all squared away, we had to bring in a push to talk. Um, in this case, most likely I'm going to use some kind of uh, hand switch like this um, where I'm sitting in the shack here. I'm kind of on a bar stool so my feet can't touch the ground. My feet are actually on a railing of this what is this? Uh, it's like a Lowe's cobalt, you know, swivel bar stool at the back. Anyways, um, so the mic switch wouldn't work for me in this application. I do like this, this Heil trigger. It feels really good in your hand. Uh, this is on loan from my friend Brian. And uh, I will give this back to him. Whether or not I'll buy my own or maybe make my own. One thing Kevin brought up that uh, you could simply make it from is a... Uh, you ever have an older vehicle that you need to work on and you go to Craigan AutoZone and you can buy those little uh, those little push to start. You simply just connect it there on the starter and you it's either like a thumb or in some cases they even have a, a trigger. So we're back on our Ethernet cable <clears throat> and the Ethernet cable then simply goes in. We brought it into a quarter inch jack, a mono quarter inch jack and we simply took our PTT to the center conductor of the quarter inch jack and then we took our ground so that would be pin six to center of the quarter inch jack and pin seven uh, to the ground of the quarter inch jack and really you can't get it wrong you could get you could get those swapped around it doesn't matter because all this is is a make and a break to get the radio to work so looking at the mixer what I have is uh, actually two microphones in the shack. That was just something Kevin and I were playing around with. And I kind of like that idea because my kid that's uh, eight years old, she kind of likes to come out here, play around on the radio a little bit, which I definitely encourage. So now we kind of have two microphones. And, uh, and what that looks like is, so I have the microphone, let's call that B over there coming in uh, on the channel one. And then I have microphone A, which is this one which is coming over here on channel four. And then on the left output, uh, that there is feeding the camera. And then on the right output, uh, that there is feeding the radio. And then I have line uh, nine and 10 here. That is coming from the computer. And then I have line 11 and 12 coming from the radio. Uh, so in other words, 
it gives me the ability to uh, bring bring the different ones up. And then this last guy here, I have a, uh, a speaker in the shack, a uh, 120 volt powered speaker if I wanted to hear that. So let's see what stations we can hear and, and just kind of see this thing in action and I'll be able to pipe it right into the camera. All right, so here I can hear myself. And one thing that's cool, which I've been you know playing with, is this mixing board has an FX panel, so I can I can bring that up, and I can do different things. Let's try this one. One two one two. All right. Anyways, we'll turn that down there, and let's go ahead and listen to the radio. Okay, the call is Zulu Lima One. Alpha, November Zulu. Correct, correct, correct. That's correct. So that's the radio. And which is also nice is I can talk at the same time you can hear the radio. I believe uh, that's an Australian station coming in. Ah, look at this. Okay. That was New Zealand. So that there is the radio. I'm receiving New Zealand pretty nice right now. <laughs> it's hard to talk over someone talking. So I can hear New Zealand on my radio, but I can't hear the other station he's talking to. So here's the other station on my radio. Yeah, copy that. Oh. Um, but I can, what I can do is I can bring up the other station on the web SDR. So let's go ahead and do that. So this here is the New Zealand station. And of course, up through the pit element log cell and see what he sees there, Wayne Dave. Okay, on the web SDR. Watch out, Connie. So this is the web S, this here is the web SDR. And now I'm switching to the radio. I really can't understand what he's saying. There's the New Zealand station. Yeah, very good. Uh, yeah, great, great signal lane tonight. Uh, I was just kind of going across the bands. I was a little surprised to see that uh, 20 meters was uh, up so late, uh, at least here in uh, Southern California. Over. Ah. That's why I can't hear the other station. He's just down south for me a little bit. Of course, I'm here in Northern California. Leave your thoughts down below. Maybe give me one of these. And uh, I'll leave a link right here about this radio. It's a fairly new radio for me. Again, that's going to be the Yesu FT991A. And uh, I'm going to try to talk to this Australian station real quick. We'll see you next time. Oh, I'll do the scene. It's the bottom of the cycle for I don't know how long now. Surely it's, um, yeah, it uh, surely must be.